This world is not what you think it is. This world is not what you think it is. Now, uh, the North Pole is the center of an ocean 10,000 feet deep. The South Pole, the center of a plateau, 10,000 feet high. The North Polar Sea is surrounded by um, continents that are slightly frozen. The Antarctic continent is surrounded by uh, a belt of ice, frozen seas of at least 1,200 miles thick. Now, the South is a plateau, it gets in some places 14,000 feet up. Uh, I've been over areas about 13,000. But strangely enough, there's left in the world today an area as big as the United States that's never been seen by a human being. And that's beyond the pole on the other side of the South Pole from middle America. And it's, uh, I think it's quite astonishing that there should be an area as big as that, unexplored. It happens to be an untouched reservoir of natural resources. And, uh, you know, as the world swings with an ever-increasing acceleration, far-flung places, once useless, like we thought the North Pole was, and no man's land, become very useful. People get really confused by the cardinal directions and how they work on the flat Earth. The, the only real direction we know is north. Yeah. North is the center where the compass points to and that the pole star yeah. is right above it, which is the one unmoving star that all the other stars revolve around. Yeah. So there's a middle point on Earth that corresponds with a middle point on the sky and that is north. Yeah. Every line outward straight from that is a southward line. Yeah. Any a circle yeah. around them with that Polaris uh, ninety degrees yeah. to either shoulder is an east, east or, or west, west course. People are confused about the ball earth because they're told that if you travel east in one, in one direction, just keep going straight, you'll come back to the place you started. Now, first of all, that's never nobody's ever done that. Yeah. When they were sailing, they had to sail around the continents, continents anyway. Yeah. So nobody nobody has or could go in a literal straight line and east come west, back to the place. Except where for Captain Cook and that who were trying to... He wasn't going in a straight line either. No, so. because... They were trying to hunt. They were trying the to find line. an inlet on yeah. the Antarctic coastline. And they never Captain did. Captain Cook, Captain George Nares, and Captain James Clark Ross yeah. are three people that had big expeditions, many years long, three to four years, and well, charted 50, 60, to, miles, yeah, yeah. 60 to 70,000 miles, never finding an inlet to the Antarctic Or getting back to the starting point, right. And now none of us are allowed to go down there. Right. I mean, in and the if same you talk sense. about it as well, it's the craziest thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. have footage, uh, we have great footage now. We um, look at uh, John Thor's channel. Oh, he's great. Antarctic Ice Wall. He's, yeah. he's got some footage that somebody posted, and it just goes on from hundreds yeah. of miles. Yeah. You can just see. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks to be about, like they say, a 200 or so foot ice wall that just, and then a plateau yeah, over it. Yeah, just which, a, which makes perfect sense. We're in like a puddle. Yeah. The oceans must be contained. The wa all water needs to be contained. Yeah. So it makes perfect sense that there would be a container of some sort on the outer circumference and it would be risen above the oceans to some degree. And of course, they, those explorers, they never went up on that plateau. They just yeah. sailed around it. They can't get the first, up on The first operation to go up on it was called Operation High Jump. Yeah. To, to jump get on, up there. up was on the that wall. Bird, that was Admiral Bird. Bird. And he was a 33rd degree Freemason. With, he took like 4,000 military men with him, I think, for the, the trip. And didn't he go and on TV in front, in front of a flat earth map? In front of a flat earth map. And he said <laughs> that he found land the size of America beyond Antarctica. Yeah. So whether, whether that's true or not, it's hearsay. Isn't it? He is over the Shackleton Ice Shelf, named for the great English explorer who kept returning to the Antarctic until death so often escaped, kept its rendezvous with him. The smooth shelf roughened. Dark rocks, called noon attacks, appear above the ice. Then rugged mountain ranges as far as the eye can see. Bunger leans forward in amazement. His eyes have caught a sudden and unbelievable change in scenery. The universal white has turned to chocolate brown dotted with blue. A cameraman goes into action. 
300 square miles of land without snow. Land that might be in New Mexico or Arizona. Pictures alone will prove Bunger has discovered a warm oasis in the shadow of the pole. It is for such supreme moments as this that men brave the hardships of exploration. The astounding undreamed of fact is that they are over a chain of warm water lakes whose shores, except for small patches, are free of ice and snow. Commander Bunger circles the largest lake in sight, five miles long. He comes in to make a landing. Water temperatures must be recorded, samples taken. He finds the water fresh, the temperature 38 degrees Fahrenheit. On the shores are vast deposits of coal and of minerals of the utmost importance to civilization. Bird is among the last aboard. He can now report to Admiral Nimitz, Operation High Jump completed.